Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and we're going to talk about iOS 8. iOS 8 should be available for most of you, depending on what device you have, iPhone 4S and newer, I believe, and you should be able to download that for yourself as of the time this video comes out. So I thought I'd share with you some of the newest features. Apple says iOS 8 is the biggest iOS release ever, and that's probably true, and a lot of that you're not going to see. In fact, it's under the surface where uh, developers can take advantage of all sorts of different things uh, that allow them to really build some better apps that interact better with everything else throughout the system. But let's get right to it and show you what you actually can see and touch right now. So let's turn the phone on and you can see we have a couple icons and we'll talk about that in a moment, but let's unlock the phone and talk about the first thing they've changed, which is photos. The photos app has been updated and it doesn't look too much different than iOS seven. There's some notifications, but what we have here, this is just a, a picture of the Moto 360 as I was testing it. Here we have some different options to edit. So if we go into edit, we can do a couple different things. Now we can enhance it just by pushing the little magic wand. We can crop the picture and you can see here we can turn the picture, blow it up, crop in the corners, wherever we want it. And then we can change, put some filters on it. We can also change the exposure, the light, black and white. We can make it brighter or darker, as you can see there. We'll go back here, and we've got all of these different settings now. We can really get into fine-tuning what we care about when it comes to our photos. We have a lot of different options as far as black and white, all sorts of things. So if you're really into making photos look just the way you want, you can now do that. They've also added some search with suggestions to the photos, and it's it's really got some smart albums and done some things with collections, But or and uh, you've also got a search here as well, so you can turn on locations, which is fine. But we can search, and you can see this was September, and here's a picture of the virtual boy. So it just shows you different things, gives you different sorting options, gives you areas where things were taken as far as pictures are concerned, and you have a lot more ease of use. It's also different on the iPad, and there will be a new photo app on OS X eventually as well. The next big change, probably the most significant for myself, is actually in messages. So if we go out here, we go into messages where we're at all the time texting, and you can see I have some conversations going on here. So if I go to where I'm talking to my brother, well, nothing looks too different, but I can attach a photo real quickly, just tap on this, and now I've got all my photos right here. I can obviously take one or go back into the photo library, but it's very easy to just tap on that photo, send, add a comment, and have it on its way. You also have some really neat options as far as voice texting to someone as well. So I can say, hey, how'd it go today? Now here I have two options. I can either delete it or I could have just slid my finger up and it will send right away. We'll delete it in this case. On the other side, we can do the exact same thing. If we hold the photo button, we can take a photo and you can see we're reversed looking up at the camera. I can take a photo or a video. Let's take a photo and it throws it right in the picture. So it's really quick, really convenient as far as that goes. And it just sent him that. I'm recording a video right now. I thought I'd just show these features to the people watching the video. And you can see it just sent that, and I can play that back. So he can listen to that right away. And so that's really a really nice feature. Now we do have some details up here as well. Under details, we've got the person. We can sh share my location right away, send my current location, throw on do not disturb. Maybe they're driving me crazy and I don't want them to be disturbed or I don't want to be disturbed by them. Uh, you can do that as well. We can also sh show all attachments that I've sent to him over time. Uh, within this conversation. So it's really nice to just scroll down here and check that out. And it's also giving me his location up here as well, just based on what I have in Find My Friends since he's in Find My Friends. It's really nice. I can quick call him, FaceTime him, and see all of this information right here. I can share my current location with him and share for one hour, end of day, indefinitely. It's just really nice and convenient. One of my favorite features that's in Messages now is 
related to group conversations. So if we go into this group conversation my family was having, I can go to details and under details, I can see everybody that's in the group. I can change the group name up here to whatever I want and everyone will see that name change. I can also add a contact now. So if I want to add someone else I don't have to start a whole new conversation now if I scroll down you've got the same location share if I'm at work and this is buzzing conf constantly and I don't want that to happen I just flip on do not disturb or better yet I leave the conversation again below is all the different attachments within that conversation as well so it's really nice you've got a lot more features and things most of us have probably wanted from the beginning so as far as conversations go, that's also convenient. And then you have this predictive text here as well. So if someone says, you can see this says, ha 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 gross, I can say I'm not going and it tries to predict, pr predict anything you're going to say. And as you type, let me pick this up here. You can see it's actually typing along with me. So it's very much like some other smartphones that have had similar text, but the effect looks a little bit nicer and it works really well. If you don't want to see it, you can scroll down and sometimes it disappears on its own, but you can scroll down, it'll, it'll go away or you can just pop it back up. But it's really nice, really convenient. And finally, emoticons is just added. You don't have to add a separate keyboard anymore to have it there. So a lot of really nice new features under messages. Spotlight is another thing on the phone, which is really nice now. Now, before you could search, you could go in here and search, but now you can search for anything like you can on a Mac. So if I start searching for, oh, we'll say about Mac, it brings up anything that might have to do with Mac. And so here it says contacts, music, you can keep scrolling. It's all sorts of things with music, podcasts related and different notes I might have had and videos even that might have those words in it that it's searching from the internet. So it's pretty neat that way. I could also try something else like we'll just use a store, I guess, and see what pops up. And in this case, nothing popped up. I will try one more thing, I guess. We'll try Apple, Apple Store app. You can see it just brings up everything. So it's a really nice new feature. It's been around in the Mac community for quite some time, but it's really nice to have on your phone as well. Another new feature is iCloud Drive. Now this may or may not pertain to you and we may not be able to check it out here as much, but basically it allows us to browse our files within an app. So if we're in pages, for example, we can see where all of the different files are stored based on the apps we have installed. So we have iCloud Drive. We can also download an app on our Mac or Windows computer and actually see all of our iCloud files and open them right there. It's something we've wanted for a long time and now we have it. Along with the iCloud Drive, we also have under settings the ability to set up family sharing. And what family sharing does, as you can see right here, it's an easy way to share with what's important with members of your family. So you can share purchased music, movies, books, and eligible apps, photos, videos, family photo streams, and all have a different Apple ID. And that's really the key here. Right now, everything is under the same Apple ID. If you have a family, you're probably already aware of that. And that's pretty annoying when you don't want to share everything, but maybe something. So you can set up this family sharing I can set someone as my son or daughter and when they go to try and purchase an app I can have it verify with me on my phone it will pop right up and I can verify that and then it will allow them to download the app so something really great for us parents out there or maybe you just have family members you want to share some of this information with I believe it's up to five people you're allowed to share with so it's a really nice feature that definitely something I've been interested in in for a long time with the introduction of the Apple Watch comes a lot of different health applications for that watch and actual applications. One application that Apple includes is called Apple Health, and you can see it here. Now, under Apple, Apple Health, you won't see anything here just because it pretty much... Well, I think they built this with the intention of the watch, but basically you can track active calories, your weight, show a lot of different data such as health data. You can see all of the different things here. There's all sorts of different things you can put in here and they'll interact with all sorts of different devices as well if someone creates them for it. You also have source and you can set up a medical ID uh, to let anybody know about your medical conditions, put in your profile. If they turn on your phone, if you're in an emergency, they may be able to see any of that information right here. And that's all included. And you cannot delete this app from the iPhone, but it is included. And in the future, I'm sure you'll see a lot more things you can do with this.
With iOS 8 comes some design changes as well. If I slide up here, you'll see this looks a little bit different as well. Everything's white now and everything works pretty much the same and there are design changes and little quirks here and there all over the phone. There are different things in the camera as well. Under camera, we have video and photo and one of the things you can do that's kind of neat is if I want to focus here and take a picture, if I tap and hold, I can slide the brightness up and down. So based on what you've got behind there, you can you can adjust that and there are more settings and it also allows developers to create better apps that have better settings for this as well. So they can get in there and really tweak things. So if you really want to adjust exposure and all of those things, you can now do that. And some of those applications I'm sure will be doing that right away. There are a lot of different changes with iOS 8, and one of my favorite is actually called Continuity. This works across OS X Yosemite when it comes out. It also works across all iOS 8 devices. Now, let me turn this off. We'll turn it back on, and you'll notice there's a little Safari icon down here in the corner. What that's going to do is let me start on the phone where I left off on my Mac. So let's open this up. I'll unlock. And you'll notice it'll load a web page straight from my Mac, the same one I was on, and it's about iOS 8. And you can see what's new in iOS 8, and it's basically just going to bring me there. So what I can do is I can do this in reverse as well. I can go off of my iPhone, go back to my Mac or my iPad, and it will show up there as well. And that's true across all devices. So if I go on my iPad, which is just here to the left, I open up Mail, go into an email or whatever I'm looking at, We'll go into an email. Now I have that email. And if I go back to the lock screen, turn it back on, you can see that icons just changed to email. If I slide up on that, unlock, it will actually bring me right to that email that I was in. Exact same email, exact same spot, and they look the same. So if I bring this in real quick, you'll see same email, same spot. It's really nice and it works across lots of apps and developers can build this in. So if you're using Pages, which is an Apple application or whatever, Twitter or any of those, as the developers build this feature in, you'll be able to use this cross platform. So anytime, maybe I wanna start an email on my phone, it's too small, I wanna switch to my Mac, it just shows up on my Mac's dock. It's really a nice feature, probably one of my favorites other than the messages updates. The final thing that's a newer change is Apple Pay. Now Apple Pay is not out until October and I can show you that in a different video when it does come out, but that will be available for iPhone 6 and 6 Plus. This is a 5S so obviously it won't work. It doesn't have the chip inside required to do that, but that's going to be a really nice addition to the phone and if it works as planned, it should be really convenient to use as well. There are a bunch of changes underneath. There's all sorts of different little things here and there, but those are some of the big changes, and I'd love to hear what you think about that. Let me know in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe, like the video, and if you have iOS 7, will you definitely upgrade? I know I upgrade to every single one. Let me know in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.